Okay. Hi, everyone. So looking forward to this one today. And everything that Grace was saying was like, wow. And what Toby said and how it's, it's hard to really know what to say today. But one of the things I'll start by saying with this message was that, and Grace would remember this, that a guy called Brian Shaw, who years ago came through our church to running in Fruitful Vine and really disrupted us and taught the next level of spiritual authority. He always said, remember one thing, Warren, you're not preaching to or sharing in with any people, you're preaching to the spirits. You're always preaching to the spiritual forces behind it. And I've never forgotten that, or I have forgotten that. When I whenever I remembered that, things have moved. And there was a great man of God called Duncan Campbell, who years and years ago, who knew that. And he would go and preach. And he was once called to go and he preached. And there was two people in the room. And he knew who he was preaching to. It was the spiritual forces behind that city and behind that region. So he spoke to the spirits. And as he started to speak, people who were around the community were led. And they didn't know why. They suddenly had this strange urge to move towards a particular building. And next minute before they knew it, they were all at the same building, which was where Duncan Campbell was preaching. And within an hour, the building was full. And that started a huge spiritual awakening in Scotland. A similar thing happened, this was back in the 1900s, um, 40s. Similar thing happened in America and the Great Awakening, in part still to this day, where when I was traveling through the southwest of, or the south of America, southeast, and still to this day, the towns and the cities that Charles Finney and his team had walked through in intercession and spiritual warfare and authority and taken command of the force of the city and seen awakenings where people were led into the buildings out of nowhere and all being called at the same time and simultaneously falling on their knees and not knowing why in different parts of the town. Still to this day, I noticed when I went there, I could feel the power. People were still listening to hymns. There were still Bibles and still various spiritual things and symbols everywhere. So we cannot underestimate the work that we do today just by even what we've been doing. And it's something that, as Grace was saying, what she's doing with the crystals. And just knowing this. And in a way, I was saying to my sons today how embarrassed I've been, I'm, I've been feeling the last couple of days. And not embarrassed in a way of a bit of a, not in terms of any kind of shaming, quite the opposite, just embarrassed and saying to them what I know and the authority I've been given and how much at times I've doubted myself and and done and and left behind what I know to be true. And I smiled about it and I thought, well, time to start stepping into it and living it now. And one of my sons says to me, well, you notice the people listen to you. They really listen to you, which actually hit me like a ton of bricks because I realized that when someone listens to me and watches me, it means they follow my example which means if I behave with power, authority, and world-changing, I inspire people around me to do the same. When I start behaving like an idiot, other people start behaving like an idiot because it gives people permission. So why do I share that? Because using my language is unique to me, where as soon as we step in and become leaders and say that we're Christians or we say that we're spiritual people or whatever label we choose to give ourselves or pastors, our assholes become open viewing in the name of Dr. Bill. And those of you know what I mean. In other words, our, our assholes become open viewing to the public. In other words, we are right on show with our lives. And the truth is we'll never change society ever if we're not willing to be on show for our lives and not willing to step up and make a difference in our society and remember who we are and why we're sent. And that's what um, even Steve Plummer, the synchronicity of what he shared with Toby stuff on spiritual authority and just what he was sharing about the Anunnaki and King Arthur and history, remembering while we're here. And Toby, I remember what Toby said to me when my life was changed and transformed in 2015 and 16, sitting in Las Vegas with him one-on-one -on -one, and then going into the mountains on his instructions and doing things and having extraordinary spiritual experiences and being reveal some of the deeper secrets of the Maharata text and remembering that we're a set here specifically as indigos as um as beings as higher 
spiritual authority to activate, awaken the planet and take the planet into the next stage and to really help and be of service to the planet and to activate the grids, do the work and basically sort it and get Earth, planet Earth to where it's meant to be. Because that's why we're here. We're not here. When you're a pilgrim on a mission, an ambassador, you're not here basically to sit there and basically do a wank job. You know, it doesn't mean that we don't take time to rest. In fact, that's very important. It doesn't mean we don't take time to have fun and every now and again do something a bit crazy and a bit out there, which makes life amusing, which makes our experience fun and ensures we fully enjoy the earth while we're on our mission. But it's, it's very important to remember first and foremost that we're here in service and we're on a mission. So that's what I'm starting with doing. And so that's why today I'm speaking on spiritual authority because there's so much that I've been taught along with grace over the years, which and different things which can be of such service and value to time to everyone who's listening to this, whether you're here live or to a replay and to every spirit and principality that's listening. Because as I said at the start, first and foremost, I'm speaking to the spiritual principalities, to the spiritual powers and, and, um, and the authorities of every city, every region, every group, every community that's represented by who's listening to this, this today. So let's start with the prayer of Yesha. So considering, Steve, you've really opened up and activated something, I think it'd be good if you got here as one of the men and read this prayer with me and read this prayer. Yep, sure, we will do. Okay, the prayer to our Father. I thou from whom the breath of life comes, who fills all realms of sound, light and vibration. Your light is experienced in my utmost holiest. Your heavenly domain abides in me. Your will is manifested in the universe, all that vibrates, just as on earth, that is material and dense. Thank you for your wisdom, understanding, assistance to manifest our daily needs. Dissolve the fetters of faults that bind us, our karma, as we release the guilt of others. Let us not be lost or caught up in superficial things, materialism, common temptations, but let us be liberated from everything that keeps us from our true purpose. From you comes the all-working will, the lively strength to act, the song that beautifies all and renews itself from age to age. Amen. Stilled in trust, faith and truth, I confirm with my entire being. Amen. Well, thank you, Steve. And thank you, everyone, for being here today. So where do I go from here? Today's word, it's interesting how much it's really good how Steve did what he did today because more than ever before, it's important that everyone's playing their right role and, and more than anything, it's the men who step up and know their spiritual authority. So many women have been doing such an amazing job and even in City Awakening, we have the women like Grace and Christine and Fiona and Nolene and others who just have worked and worked and women just serve, they love to serve. They feel their people's pain. They feel that when a city has turned to evil, when a city has lost its moral fibre. It's the men who step up throughout history and scripture who lead with masculine authority and war. So more than ever, especially this is for the men, but of course it is for everyone too, because the women can exercise spiritual authority. And in fact, from my experience, usually already are. But more than ever, it's the time to step up into spiritual authority and know who we hear and what we hear and the, and the power We've been given over forces of darkness and over the spirits of this earth. Remembering that Jesus, when he walked into the realms, he came to disrupt Satan's kingdom. That's what the scriptures say. He didn't come basically to be love and light. And, and of course, he was love and light. He did show the love and light. But he came first and foremost to disrupt Satan's kingdom. That's what he said. He came to evict Satan and basically on earth and get things back in right order on planet Earth and disrupt the programming of the Anunnaki, or whatever else you call it, while at the same time recognising and working within their structures of authority and not disrupting things before their time. So everything Jesus did was in divine order. He came and the spirits would acknowledge him, they knew his authority, and they didn't dare mess with him. At the same time, nor did he mess with their authority, but he removed them where they were out of authority. So today's word I just put was to start by what? Yeshua said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. 
So that's a pretty big thing to say. All authority in heaven and on earth. So in other words, not just on heaven, in the spirit realm, but on earth. And that's one of the reasons why I've been saying to Grace all week in my changes that I've been having and in, a, in what I call a metamorphosis that I've been going through. Is I, and for those who know me know this is a miracle for me to say this and really mean it. I'm like, city awakening absolutely has to have land and have physical land, have physical place that people can see physically. Because the reality is most people need to physically see things. I said one way or the other, we're getting land and we're getting it in record time. We're getting land, we're getting property, we're getting a physical center and getting a temple. Something that's going to do that. So I want to say that and put that out there and know, know it's there and coming. But behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Again, this is pretty big. This is pretty big stuff to be saying. And the reason I'm, I'm preaching from scripture today, because one of my challenges has been, you know, like, obviously, there's been so much I've learned from the scriptures over the years and explored other books. But first and foremost, with Australians, we do have our roots in the scriptures. That's where we have all of our roots. The two main what I call religions or spiritual teachings we have are in the wisdom of the indigenous ancestors, first and foremost. And then also in the scriptures introduced by the colonialists and all of them do work together. And for many, this is what we understand. And then, of course, for other cultures, you've got the Hindus and other teachings and all this does work together to bring a work of a higher power and greater good. But I love what I love about the Bible is, is the militant spiritual warfare teaching that's in the scriptures. And it's one of the reasons why many of the greatest activists, and I said this the other day, to someone I was talking to and she actually became a Christian now and she follows Christ closely not in a religious church sense but very much in her life because she said she noticed that in COVID that the activists the greatest activists she said were nearly all people with a strong religious or spiritual base those who know JPC is no he openly says I was wrong what I said before there is good and evil there is God there is an almighty God and he said and I acknowledge that he said I totally acknowledge that and he he's real and he's realized that and many have started to realize this very this reality and of course many of the activists in covid and it's because as i said to someone the other day i said growing up i said we were taught to live for a cause when i went to church we were taught to live for a cause we were taught to live with moral law we were taught to live for something beyond ourselves we were taught to die for it if we had to we were taught to do whatever it was takes to do what's right change the world and make an extraordinary difference. And it gave us a sense of family, a sense of meaning, a sense of community. And to the point where we've been actually breaking down everything to see what it looks like in the church and what made a good church and something that changed society. And it was very much about being a healing center and a family. And there's others in this group that provide that for people better than I, than I will do. But then there was also the disruptors, the people who'd come in disrupt and bring in the spiritual authority and that would get you inspired. And I realized that's my unique gift. I'm good at that. And then I get people inspired. And after that, there's got to be a structure and system to implement this in the real world. So everything I'm teaching today, I'm going to do as best I can to, to show you this, but how to implement this in the real world and go out and make a difference in your life and in the lives of your community around you. Because there's many issues right now in society, which I'm sure we would agree, need a major overhaul. And Everyone here listening to this, you're the ones to do this because as Yeshua said, we are the light of the world. So we may be in a frequency war, but we have authority over it. And those of you who've listened to Raymond Grace would know that. As, and this is why we all love Raymond because Raymond comes and he simplifies things. Whereas I bring it from a scripture point of view, Raymond just simply is a, is a in a way, represents the indigenous wisdom because that's who trained him. He learned from the indigenous ancestors. He learned from the shamans and the medicine men and that's why that's why i suggested like in america australia it's the indigenous ancestral wisdom that we've got that's the foundation of a lot of our spiritual our connection to the land our connection to the earth and then of course we've got the um the teachings of the colonial religion which is the more christian kind of base and really the two of them working together is so profound and i've been discovering even like this week i was i was taken out by a man into the bush 
who was trained by Aboriginal elders and shown sacred sites and taught him how to connect with the land and the spirit to the land. And I had a profound experience just going on a bushwalk with him on Friday and being taught how to honor the spirits of the trees, the spirits of the land, the spirits of the ancestors, the spirits and realizing that every coded wisdom and everything that's ever happened in history since time began on earth is encoded in the earth. It's encoded. Every blood that was spilled, every like wounding that happened, but at the same time, every great teaching, every great society, every great leader, it's all encoded in there and we can tap into that wisdom when we learn to connect and when we learn to honor the spirits of the land and learn to work with the spirits of the trees and, and the guardians of the land and the waterfalls. And it's, it's so profound. I wouldn't, I, I'm not even qualified to say a lot on that just yet. I'm still learning myself, but so this frequency war, we've been given authority to transform it, take authority and change the world that we live in. And while working within order and structure and in synchronistically divided guidance. So that's why, I really felt to go on this today and really teach this. And today is going to be sharing a lot of what I've learned and stories and things like that, and just things you can do on a practical level. And so before we do that, let's just recap on what we've covered the last few weeks so we don't lose the wisdom of what we've learned to date. So, so far, how's, is everyone following? Is it going too fast? Just a bit of, just give me a, a chat if you're good to get some feedback, because I'm really interested in like i said bringing this to a practical level to help and like i said also remembering who we're speaking to here we're speaking to the spiritual authorities we're speaking to the spirit and we're speaking to the councils and all the spirits behind all of this whether they're dark forces light everything just raise your hand if it's or make a comment if, if you're following it's all good so far okay great thank you I like to get feedback to say, you know, just because I'm changing a lot too and realizing how much everything in my heart designs to, desires to empower as many people because this one webinar can bring so much change. If every one of you goes away and spreads the message, if every spirit gets impacted and the people who listen to this, this can bring profound change. This is one webinar today. So the golden vortex, this was something we learned before. That's why we do this with protection. In the book called The Earth's Energies by Dr. Adrian Clark, he discovered this. And I remember learning this from Ed Stratcher and from um and from Steve McDonald and a few other really great, you know, shamans and spiritual teachers who I learned from. And they talked to me about it. And at the time I did it by faith, but then I learned the scientific basis behind this through Dr. Adrian Clark. And now this actually does activate and transform energy. So it activates the Merkaba, it cleans up energy, it increases the light. So even now, for example, just by, I'm just feeling the spinning vortex all around the whole group and around everything and anyone in your community and anyone listening to this right now, because we have that authority. In the keys of Enoch and in the book of Isaiah and the scriptures, it talks about the crystalline pyramid, the great pyramid of Giza, which will be part of the new millennium, the new, the new earth, the new crystal grids. So there's a lot of talk about this in the Keys of Enoch. That's why people who start doing grid work usually end up getting pictures and visions of pyramids coming out of waters and everything, because pyramids is all part of the activation sequence. And that once the pyramids start coming up, that means you're starting to get the earth back in order. So if you're seeing pyramids come up in your area or sensing them, um, that means that things are changing in that region. So as an example, in Albany, Western Australia, where some have been seeing pyramids come up from the bay, that tells you that that bay is being activated and things are actually changing already in Albany and that city is being activated and it's coming into, into, into right of divine alignment. So that's an example. So that's why right now we're just bringing the pyramid. And this, just all of us just get a sense of a pyramid covering the whole group and activating the whole group. And everyone listening to it. See, it's one of the wisdom of the trees that I've noticed how the trees provide shelter for us. The pyramid provides shelter, it provides energetic activation. 
So, of course, I mentioned just a few little things about pyramids and how they activate things. Then there's also the, the, guard, the guardians that basically we work with in spiritual authority. So we've got the five archangels who have been given authority. And when you read the Keys of Enoch, and when you read the Pist of Sophia, when you read the Holy Bible, you will see these beings named. These angels, because they're the archangels, they're the head angels, they oversee the higher realms, they oversee, they have authority. And as soon as we work within their structure, we're safe, we're protected. We're able to exercise authority. But it's something I've realized in a world where we lost our sense of authority, because we've seen the abuse of authority, the temptation has been to not honor any authority. And we because and we start to go. F you, and Australia especially as a convict ancestry, we have a F you mentality. America, of course, in a way, was founded on a revolution against, you know, authority abuse. And of course, in a war, that's important. At the same time, we understand and we honor authority because by, because, and Yeshua all throughout the Holy Scriptures says that you cannot exercise authority if you don't honor authority, if you don't within your authority structures. So, I was fortunate enough to grow up in the church where I learned this. I was taught in the church to honor my spiritual teachers. And that's one of the reasons I do have spiritual authority and gifts in my, in my pastoral minister role, why healings and gifts have been given to me. Because the one thing I can say for myself is I've done that. I learned that when I was young. I learned to honor and serve the spiritual teachers and masters. And with serving them, not just serving them by smiling at them, but by showing up and turning up and that's why I'm grateful to every one of you that keeps showing up. And also, I, I, I honoured them with my money. I, I gave, in fact, I was saying to my sons how much money Grace and I gave to our church when we believed in the vision. We gave a lot of money to the church. We were, I was giving a lot of, a lot of money to different works to serve, make sure that my pastor was well looked after because I knew the law of the tithe. I knew that the, that the law of prosperity taught that. Catherine Ponder in her book, Divine Laws of Prosperity, she said this very clearly. She said she ran a church in the middle of World War II, and in the area she was in, the people were really struggling from food shortages and everything. Her church, not a single person, had food issues. All of them prospered because all of them tithed, because she told them, you tithe and you give, and you make sure your spiritual teacher looked after. You follow right financial management and order in your finances. You'll prosper, and everyone in her church prospered because she worked within spiritual authority. So I learned this when I was younger. I learned to serve my church pastors faithfully, and and true submission means you serve even when sometimes serving is hard, and when you think they're being a bit of an idiot. And some of you know what I mean. Some of you have worked, worked with spiritual teachers who I won't name, but who are magnificent, great, great spiritual healers, but at times behave like absolute clowns. And yet, um, you still serve them and refuse and didn't speak badly of them. I mean, that's one of the reasons why those of you listening to this, that's why you've, you've prospered in your spiritual walk because there's a, there's a bit of a law of the spirit. You don't dishonor your spiritual teacher. It doesn't mean you, you don't call them to account when things are out of order. That's very important. And I think sometimes we, we mistake submission for, for being foolish and not calling teachers to account when they're out of order. But basically operating in the realms of authority is really 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 important and it's very similar it's like if someone comes into your home and wants to come and then walks into your house they just take their shoes off or they walk in with shoes all over your carpet they leave dirt there then they kind of walk in they start eating food from your fridge um they go oh cool they see some chocolates and start eating from it and then go down and lie down in your bed because they're tired i think you'd all get pretty pissed off pretty quickly and the reason why is they're showing a blatant disregard for your authority. So if someone comes to your house or wants to visit you, they either they let you know they're going to come, or if they come, they knock on the door. And then you say to them, yes, and they go, well, can I come in? And I'd like to visit. And you can be they say, well, no, I'm busy right now with my family. Can we maybe make another day? And they go, okay, that's fine. Or else you say, yeah, sure, come in. And you open the door and come in and let's come. Can you take your shoes off, please? And Let's come through and you, you walk the person through, take them through. Yeah. Do you want a cup of tea or coffee? And if the person sits here and honors the rules of your house and you say, look, just um, 
make sure you have your shoes off and make sure this because I'm, I've just had the carpets washed and things like that. So it's really important to realize this. And in the same way that you expect someone to walk into your house and do that, it's very important that you show respect for authority in all areas of life. And I remember even with my kids going to school, when I taught them, I said to them, well, guys, just when you walk into the school room, you respect your teachers. Now, if your teachers start abusing their authority, you speak out. You remember their position, so you, you do it with respect. You don't be insulting or disorderly, but you have every right. And I still remember with William, for example, one time when he had someone actually, some kid, try and strangle him with a tea towel. And he, he'd warned them about it, and then they kind of kept going. So he then threw it off there and, and basically punched, and punched them and grabbed them and beat the crap out of them, gave them a jolly good beating. So, of course, the school had a policy against fighting, so I was calling to the school. First thing I did was heard William's story. So, of course, I told William, absolutely, you've got to speak your truth. So, so, of course, I went and confronted the school and talked to them about it. <laughs> and they were nervous of me because I went with authority. But then, basically, they agreed with me and acknowledged what I was saying. And we worked out something. And so I said, well, you absolutely stand your ground. You don't let injustice. I mean, you, you were in self-defense here. You, you, you hit that kid not because you were bullying him, but only to defend yourself because the kid was trying to choke you with tea towel. And fortunately, the church listened to my authority the church school and I told them and they said absolutely we're suspending the kid for three days and they said but do you mind if William goes home this afternoon because we just want to be we want to be seen as at least doing something on both sides I said of course that's fine as long as William realizes there's no punishment because he's he did the right thing and so they told him that and William spoke out his truth too so I'm sharing all that because going into the school I said you know you, in class you listen to your teachers you honor the rules of the class, but at the same time, if things are not good, you speak out. I said to William, if you see friends being bullied, speak out. You know, go and tell the teachers. If if make them listen to you. That's part of what you do in the school. You know, you want to be a light to your school. And of course, same with his friends. I said the same with William with his friends. Make sure of your friends. And he does it with his friends. So his friends listen to him. Exercising authority. And authority is what, give, is what gives you the power, but authority also means that you submit to authority and that we all submit. And that's within all realms. And I've been having a little bit of a, um, a bit of a good spank in the bum, and it's a self-imposed spank in the bum. With, no, with a bit of a laugh, a bit of a chuckle, allowing myself to really clean up my own act within myself to get back to my own standards. And what, what I know to be true and what I believe in, and a good example of me and a big change, and some of you will probably go like, wow, like all of my sons and, and everyone in, in the group, I said, for example, it's very important to honor the government system that's given us the opportunities that we've been given. It's very important. I mean, I said, I can tell you now that people in Afghanistan, Russia, um, China, Iran would be like, die for the opportunities that we've been given like the ability to run a business in our country without having someone come around necessarily and just shoot you, for example. Or like in Russia, you might just get governments turn up and just do, do stuff to you. And sure, we have, look, our government certainly right now are doing some stuff that requires accountability and need to be called to account. But before we can really call them to account, how much are we calling ourselves into account in our own lives? And I was reading yesterday about an Iranian man and his son who turned up with nothing, fleeing as refugees 20 years ago, started a business with nothing, were living on debt and borrowed money for years and years and years, but ground their way through, now have the biggest company selling fishing eyeglasses in the country. And they did it because they got in there, they worked within the system and they appreciated it. And I often find immigrants, many of my clients, for example, when I have worked over the years as a lawyer, Warren Black lawyer, Warren Black accountant, who are immigrants, have done extraordinarily well financially extraordinary because they come in and they see the weaknesses but they, they appreciate the fact they got the opportunity to do this which in their own countries they wouldn't get they can actually build a business they can actually work but i couldn't do that and things like that so i said you know even taxes i said 
appreciate your taxes because that's the way of valuing the system and the fact that every single time you walk out of your house there's the bins get taken you know you get roads getting fixed you get freeways fixed up you get all this stuff happening now yeah sure governments at times way over abused in australia there's no question that um i think things go way too far in this country and i know that better than anyone but it said it doesn't mean you don't start by valuing what you've got and as you start to value it and pay your dues and start to make more money then you start to get the right earn the right to legally minimize your taxes for example by using structures by using things like foundations in that if you do more philanthropy and or doing things like moving overseas and um becoming a non-resident if that floats your boat or finding other ways to do it you know there's all kinds of things that come about that you earn the right to as you exercise authority and work within a structure and it's one thing I've realized was, was one of my biggest mistakes that I've made in recent years in my quest and my desire to absolutely transform society and bring radical change I went a little bit far in the other extreme and I and I forgot what got me very successful in certain areas of my life in the early stages by my ability to eat to honor authority and understand how everything works and bit by bit I've been working myself back to balance to realize that there's no question our system needs a major cleanup no question so do not misunderstand what I'm saying here today there's no question that our system needs a major cleanup there's no question that that but when we're showing impeccable integrity in our own life and showing it by our example by our wealth by our order and authority by our ability to take authority in our lives we very very quickly people will listen to us I mean people listen to me for example because they see things in my life that they admire and aspire them and my strength and I know that's one of my strengths I have mental strength I can do they can do some things that others just can't do but at the same time it doesn't make me any better in terms of an egotistical sense if anything just gives me more responsibilities to make sure that I use wisely the authority and trust that I'm given to make a difference in people's lives in my society and whom I'm serving and so we start to realize this and like for example with Raymond Grace one of the reasons why you've Raymond works with me one-on-one -on -one, which he does with very few people but he said that to me because I respect Raymond I and I admire Raymond a lot I honor the guy immensely I revere him I think the guy is an extraordinary man I look up to him I spy to him all the time and that's one of the reasons why I've, I've learned to man up more I, I, I admire him because he's he's a very and every now and again when my little beta male pussy starts coming out and I start kind of trying to people please which every now and again I fall into that trap and then Raymond reminds me to man up and pull my head in and stop doing that shit you know and he's a good mentor for me and he and he as he said to me I work with you because I can see you want to serve your state and serve your people with a sense of beauty and when I say I honor him I don't just honor him by saying things on webinars I make sure the guy gets money every month for me I've signed up to his program where there's, there's monthly payment and then if he comes and speaks for me and I make money from his speaking for me I make sure some of it goes to him because I want to make sure I honor my teacher and honor my and honor someone who does good by me and these are really powerful spiritual laws of authority to do that kind of stuff and we've really lost our way in society everyone and we know we have really lost our way we have absolutely lost our marbles I mean COVID saw absolutely extraordinary nonsense going on but there wasn't just COVID COVID kind of revealed what's been happening for years that's how I saw it. the kind of disorderly bullshit that was going on and the complete disregard for authority for spiritual authorities for teachers the way the bad ways we speak about each other about our governments about our churches about everything it came to the roost and we got our asses walloped and even then we still haven't fully learned the lessons I don't believe in any way we have I think some of us have started to slowly grasp it but we still haven't fully learned our lessons you know we haven't really learned why we got our ass kicked so much and that's why we got another ass kicking pending in our planet we can all feel it that's why people have been freaking out and getting crazy because we still haven't been learning our lessons we still haven't been and it's embarrassing that we haven't learned our lessons it really is I mean in a way we're a ridiculous society you've got countries like Cambodia and Rwanda and so many others you go through stuff of horrors that we can't even imagine and yet we get protected and we get protected and we get protected and somehow we still are able to go and function and still we don't listen 
And in a way, it horrifies me. And I, that's why I said I've been embarrassed in myself, like really fucking embarrassed. I really have. And going like, God, help me to clean up my act. Help me to be more responsible, Lord. That's been my prayer. Give me wisdom to lead better than I do. Because honestly, it's ridiculous. It really is. Like some of the stuff that with COVID, I find it was ridiculous. The way we disregard our planet and our earth, it's like it's ridiculous. It's like it's embarrassing. The way we disregard our opportunities, I cringe. You know, I cringe when I look at some of the things I've said at times. I cringe on some of the dumb shit I've said on webinars at times and things like that. And I'm and I I, I know you hear my heart. I don't say this in a derogatory sense. Quite the con contrary, I feel the best I've felt in a long time. You know, because it's like yeah, we can. It doesn't mean I lose myself. Because yeah, I'm always going to be that crazy Doctor Bill and you know lunatic who goes around doing. That's part of who I am. It's like Elon Musk. It's like Trump. Same time, no one will ever say for a minute Trump's a child or baby or or does that. I mean, the guy the guy is responsible. He's doing a duty as is must to save it to help their country and help clean things up and things like that. There's so much that we can actually do to change our society. You know, so much we can do. And overall, I'm actually pretty excited right now. You know, I'm actually pretty excited about where things are going. And where things can potentially go i really am and it's just as we start to get this authority so first i'm saying all this because to exercise spiritual authority it's important that we be in authority and we be under authority and anything which we're part of a work we work within the authority structure anything that we do whether it's we're in a business whether we're in a church and, and submitting in a spiritual teaching, no problems telling people if you come to this church and you regard this as part of your home group, and some of you are amazing what you do to support you give. And that's why Grace and I work out our stuff for you, because some of you are just go over and beyond. You know, you show it with your financial contributions, you show it with your um to the work, and you and you show it with the service that you give. You show it by getting out there and telling other people to get their asses along and be involved in the work so they can get spiritual protection as well and things like that. An example, at the very least, you know, we run a daily energy group, which is basically where William does daily clearings and his team on people on a group once a week, big clearing, $49 a month, which is strange, which is nothing. At the very least, if you're not doing anything else, you can be doing that, for example, if you're part of this work. And then that way you're also getting value by getting your energy kept clean. And that's what we knew. In fact, I remember in my life that when my life was really protected and prospering was when I was actually submitted to my teachers, even though at times they were idiots. And that means if I told you some of the stories of our church leaders, some of them were absolute idiots. They really were. They did lunatic stuff. In fact, I can remember um, Pastor, Pastor, and I'll say him because honestly, the guy was a hero for me, you know, Pastor Steve Smith. He really was the guy what got me started in my spiritual mission he helped me taught me a lot of the, the gifts of faith healing he taught me how to grow a church and everything a lot of what i applied i learned from him and i can remember when things went wrong in the church i was bitter towards him my health fell apart and i specifically when i was you know beside myself disabled in 2002 and grace would remember this i was disabled literally i my money was shot and i remember god speaking to me and telling me to go back and serve steve and help him out and of course i told grace that she said you lost your mind i said yeah i'm not doing it don't worry then i lost even more money and things got worse finally i humbled myself i went to him and as soon as we started helping him i got a, a miracle healing i got a miracle job out of nowhere and everything turned around within a month it was unbelievable what happened and the funny thing was steve didn't actually improve he still was running his church like a silly boy at the time Things went wrong, but this time I, I served him because I was serving God. And when he decided to shut the church down, he handed it over to me. And his exact words was to say, um, he told the people, you know, everyone abandoned me when I made my mistakes. But Warren stuck by me and I'm and I'll happily hand over my authority to him. And he did. He laid hands on me and prayed. And the moment he did, an impartation came into me, and I felt like I was a new man. I was able to get up. And run a church which before that i never thought i could do because i'd never passed a church and the thought terrified me and i went from a man but in one day i i wanted to run a church and i knew i could do it and i was excited about doing it and that's how things work in the realm of the spirit it works in authority it works in transmission it's like when you get a degree you go to university you get a degree 
and then you get anointed by the profession, like the, the law society anoints you, you go before the Supreme Court as a lawyer, you take an oath, and then after that, you are now anointed as a lawyer and recognized as a lawyer, and you can walk out and get a job. You finished your articles of apprenticeship, you then get a further anointing where you're recognized that you're now a full lawyer, and then you have one year probation as a lawyer under restricted practice. After a year, you can get another anointing, and now you can go and start your own business. It all works in order. Same with the medical profession. My brother, who you know, who's a magnificent doctor. Honestly, I'm proud. I'm proud of him. The guy is is extraordinary. He's prospering in his life. He's he stood he stood over in South Australia about the COVID thing. He spoke his truth. He was a good doctor. He still is. I mean, my brother. There was a time in his life, you know, where he. My brother is a bit like me. He's got a little bit of a, bit of a smart ass, and he stands up for what is right. Great guy. And he was very mad because he was being badly treated within the medical profession when he was doing his apprenticeship. And so he kind of, you know, originally an injustice, which warranted him speaking out, ended up with him kind of being picked on. And then he turned into complete smart ass and started being a bit silly. And come long story short, I won't, you know, divulge or mess up his privacy, but I end up having a talk to him when others were kind of saying to him, you know, kind of backing him. I was the one who pulled him in the line about the authority structure he was in. And, and he listened to me. And straight away, he sorted things out with his whole medical group. He, they graduated him, and he's now prospering as a doctor. And so I'm sharing all that because all of us go through this journey. You know, Part of our spiritual awakening as we're moving to the next level is you're going to get tested, which means the authority that you trust are going to do dumb shit to you, and they're going to you know, overreact to you. And I always like to say, think of King David. I mean, man, this dude in the Bible, if you want to know the story of David, for those who don't know it, King David was literally, um, was the, he basically was a good king. He'd fought Goliath. He served Saul faithful, faithfully. His reward was Saul got threatened by him and tried to kill him. And he was hunting him around because he was threatened by him and insecure that David would take over his kingship. And David had an opportunity twice to kill him. And both times he said, I'm not killing the Lord's anointed. I refuse to kill the man who started me in life. I refuse to overstep God's authority. Yes, I know I'm called to be king, but I'm not going to do it before my time. I'm going to, I'm going to still honor Saul right to the end, to the point where even when Saul eventually died and everyone was celebrating, um, the guy who came to tell him and gloat that he'd been one to kill Saul, David ordered him to be killed and just said, no, you overstepped the mark. It wasn't your job to kill Saul. He said, you don't kill the Lord's anointed and do what you did in the way he did it. And right till the end, David on Saul. And then he actually cried and bawled his eyes out. And he read his prayer where he prayed for Saul and called him one of the great kings of Israel and how he fell upon the mountains of Israel and what a shame it was for society. He said it was a shame that a great king of Israel had fallen on the mountains because it brought glory to the enemies of God. And he actually grieved over it. So it's not surprising that David ended up becoming the king of Israel. Because David only cared about God's work. And that's why the Bible actually says about David, he was a man after God's heart. It always makes me cry because I've seen the, I've seen how our society is broken down to this. And how we've lost, we've just lost our fucking way on this kind of stuff. We really, really, really have. And I remember one of the biggest things in COVID, and those who know me closely know I grieved um, inside was wild with rage. And one of the biggest reasons that I collapsed internally with the whole thing was my horror at the way that people spoke about their governments and about the way it was happening and the way the insulting that was going publicly. For example, our own Premier, Mark McGowan, it, it broke me because I'm like, yeah, he's obviously doing stuff, but for fuck's sake, let's clean up our own act and pray for our Premier. Let's get behind this and sort this fucking shit out, you know? It did. It, it, it went against everything about my ethics and everything like that. And because I'd been taught with the spiritual authority, I knew how things work. I knew every time we went up there and despise and, and abuse our leaders. And I'm not saying calling them to account. They needed to be called to account. Absolutely, well and truly to be called to account. They need to be told, this is bullshit what you're doing. You do not go around tampering with people's bodies like this. But then we don't behave like children and get on and do stuff like that, you know, like what we're doing. And that was what I realized. And in a way, I can see in saying that, I'm not saying this to blame society, because I was doing that in my own way too, well and truly. It's more a chance for us to move forward on a new beginning and clean up our act and say, if we really claim to be ambassadors 
and sons and daughters of God and say all that shit and go around on webinars and do stuff and say we're going to do all this stuff, we show it with our life. We show it with such authority and action that people go, okay, yeah, well, these people have got something to give. The people that are changing society are the people who do that. They work within the system. While at the same time, they're not afraid to go against the system. And, for example, one of my favourite stories is the story of Uber, who strategically chose to break the law because they saw the law was stupid. Uber saw that the whole rules on taxis and keeping it within that system that was disrupting things, they deliberately went and started Uber knowing that they'd be prosecuted and they raised 100 million to handle legal fees. Literally, they did. It's pretty funny when you read the story because they knew they'd be prosecuted, but they knew that the laws were stupid and they were determined to change them and they did. So sometimes to do the kingdom of God, we've got to do that as well. So for example, I don't, with the farmers thing that's going on, that heritage thing, it's, 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 it's terrible what's happening there. But again, you know, and that may require a really strong stand and strategic decisions to do certain things. We go, no, no, we have to find a way to just go, no, we're not going to follow this, but how can we do this with wisdom? And again, I'm not saying you go and do that by any means. That, that this is where people will be led. The point is to action things. We start with cleaning up our own house, our own authority. Once it, once judgment begins in our own house, then we get spiritual authority to go, okay, now we're going to start cleaning up everything else around us. So right now, for example, both in our own family and business, we're going through a major change, you know, to really get the business to the next level. For me, it's getting the church to the next level. It's like, let's just get City Awakening as a light and shining. Let's just get it orderly. Let's just get everyone involved in the church really contributing and praying and making up their church and then, you know, tithing and giving in some way, whatever it is, but tithing and giving, making sure from there that we're getting out there and expanding our reach by getting other like-minded churches to get involved with what we're doing. Then in turn from there to take the world into the, the world greater online and do advertising, whatever else. Then to get out there and spread the message, encourage everyone to spread the message, spread the word out and be an ambassador for the work. And we can so quickly clean up society. I, I, I have no, not the slightest doubt we can clean up society extraordinarily quickly, really quickly, because we have all authority in heaven and earth. That's what the scriptures say. You know, we really, really do. And it's just coming back to scriptures, for example, which we've learned, like Ephesians 6, which says the battle is not flesh and blood. So notice that word. It's against rulers and principalities of this world. So there's order in the spiritual realm. So that's our battle. So when I'm preaching or sharing the message and the word of God today, that's what I'm doing. And I really was told this week very clearly to own the fact that first and foremost, I'm Warren Black. I'm pastor, minister of religion, spiritual teacher, who's also a qualified lawyer, qualified accountant. And I'm like, yeah, I'm owning my label. I'm owning my title. And when I did that, I felt different. I noticed I felt authority, like, own it, Warren. Stop beating around the bush and kind of, oh, I don't know what people think about the church. No. Minister of religion, man of God, spiritual teacher. Because by doing that, I'm like, oh, shit. I now have a responsibility to live by. I'm going to get more, okay, well, if you, want, if you say that, Warren, then this is what we expect of you. And there's certain things that are going to be expected of me and society has a right to expect from me. Every right. And I can run around and behave silly and pretend I don't, but they do. Many certain things they will expect from me if I can get fucked. You know, like, no. Well, if you're going to start saying silly stuff like that, no, absolutely not at all. So by owning who you are, it's exciting. But yeah, it also means your standard lifts up. And that can be like, ooh, yikes. Bugger. Okay. Some of you know what I mean, like, oh dear. So it's, that's why Raymond Grace's guides work with me. Babaji works with me, for example, because he saw me honor Toby and work with Toby, Alexander, and work with Avon and work with others. And the indigenous elders work with me. That's why I was able to go in and access their wisdom because I honored. And when I went onto the land with this guy, John Thompson, on Friday, um, there was one part when he went to this rock. And I was about to join him, and I got a clear sense to go to the lower rock. So I did. I mean, afterwards, I said to John, no, I felt that I was under your authority on the land because you were working with the elders. So it was very important I went to the lower rock and I served you. It's not my job to basically go on the rock next to you because I'm not your equal right now. I'm not your equal on this land. You are your authority. So therefore, I have to go to the lower rock. I've got to make sure that I'm 
and 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 the status has to be seen but i am under your authority I mean, there's other times when I feel like I'm an equal. Like when I'm doing webinars with Raymond, we're equals. I'm not under Raymond's authority. If I walk into Raymond's webinar, I'm under his authority. I do what he tells me. But he also knows when he comes into my webinar, he's under my authority. So though we're equals, he submits to my rules and my system. And that's how spiritual order and spiritual authority work. So when we call in the five archangels and we're submitting to the authority, we bring in everything connected with them, for example. We bring in a huge array of universal power that can spread right through and change the whole universe at the same time. When we work with the indigenous elders and we call in the medicine men, we work with all of their wisdom. When we, when we call in Yeshua, we have all of the Christ authority we bring in. I mean, it's just like so excitingly, wonderfully, wowsy, all kinds of stuff. We even get the authority to start evicting false spirit gods. I mean, I still remember, like, um, you know, some of the stuff I've learned over the years about people doing this, like Al Fury, Pastor Al Fury, who walked into a restaurant and started exercising spiritual authority and speaking in tongues and calling the prosperity of God over every single person in the restaurant, yelling at the top of his voice, everyone thinking like he'd lost his marbles, and then telling all spirits and, and authorities of, of any dark spirits to leave. He walked out and his wife said to him, what the heck did you just do there? And he goes, oh, shit. He goes, that was a little bit over the top, wasn't it? She goes, yes. And he said, two weeks later, he's back in the restaurant because a friend wanted to go there. And he was literally, like, terrified, thinking they're going to absolutely, like, go off at me. He walks into the restaurant hoping no one would remember him. But as soon as they saw him, they remembered him all right. And the next minute, this guy comes running out who he knew was the owner and he hadn't met last time. And he thought, oh, no. I'm in so much trouble. And the owner said, well, you that like guy that came running around yelling and speaking all that spiritual stuff over my restaurant and calling about spirits, all that kind of stuff. And he goes, uh, yeah, sorry about that. He goes, no, don't apologize. He said, ever since you've done that, he said, my business has gone berserk. He said, it's just exploding with prosperity. He said, we've had so much customers. I'm having to open a new store. And he said, and every one of those blooming staff members of mine you prayed for, how having all these unexpected financial blessings hitting them, like suddenly they're getting money come out of nowhere and things like that. But because you didn't do it to me, I haven't had any of that stuff. So you're going to do all that right now to me if you're going to stay in my restaurant. <laughs> and he goes, oh, okay. And I remember Pastor Leon Dowdell, who Grace remember this. You know, we were in a church and he shared about the spiritual authority we're given. And Leon shared about one lady was complaining about her workplace and whinging to him. He goes, why are you whinging about your workplace? Just go and take authority over the spirits and kick them out. And she's like, what can I do that? And he goes, well, of course you can do that. You know, all authority is given to you in heaven and earth. Go and kick out the spirits. Let's take authority and drive those guys out that are causing all of the, like, abuse in the workplace and causing, like, everyone to have affairs with each other and sexual harassment. All that was going on in their workplace. So they took authority over those unclean spirits. So they ordered them to leave and called in the, the higher councils of Christ into the, into the, into the work. A week later, <laughs> she's, she, she, um, she basically came and giggling and said to me, you're not going to believe what happened. He said, what? She said, all hell has broken loose. Like all these affairs have been exposed in the workplace. There's always inquiries going on. People have been fired. We've got new bosses coming in and everything's changed. Like new bosses kicked everyone out. And of course, and he goes, well, why are you surprised? She goes, I know, but it's incredible. Leon also shared the story when he said he went to a house to stay. And this lady said to him, oh, look, just got to warn you, Leon. Um, you know, my, I think it was my, my husband or someone gets epileptic fits regularly. And just so it doesn't scare you, he goes, well, there won't be any epileptic fits while I'm here. And she said, well, why? He says, oh, no. He said, epileptic spirits don't have permission to operate when I'm in the house. It's that simple. I'm not allowed to operate. And she kind of looked at him, so she said, yeah, so don't worry. Both spirits won't play up while I'm here. She said the whole time he stayed there, her, the husband was like in perfect health, no fits. We normally had daily fits. They couldn't believe it. So much so, she thought he was healed. The day he left the house, soon after he left, he had an epileptic fit. Now, that's spiritual authority. That's spiritual authority, everyone. That's why Raymond does stuff and things change, because that's spiritual authority. We have authority over all this shit. We really do. We have authority over every spirit in the name of Christ, in the name of the, in the name of the Christ consciousness, in the name of Yeshua. 
We have. I remember seeing Pastor Steve Smith, and believe you me, Steve had one of the most messed up personal lives, and yet the guy would do extraordinary miracles. And I remember one time asking him, how do you do this? Like, he'd walk up to people with broken backs and order in the name of, of Yeshua, of Jesus, that they'd be, they'd be healed, and people with broken backs would fall over and get healed. He'd say, well, I know that they're going to be healed because I know the name of Christ heals everyone. He said, it's not me doing the healing, it's the authority of the Christ that does it. And that's why we also have authority with the blood of Christ. That's one of the reasons why with the blood of Christ, it, if you read anything, and I've met people who come out of Satanism, they're all terrified. They've all said, oh, yeah, yeah, no, we don't dare mess with this. They said, fortunately, most people don't know about it. They said, fortunately, people don't know about it. And that's why I remember one Satanist who came three years ago when during COVID, I ran one of his things to activate authority a very high ex-satanist who had very high authority who was out of it says to me this is really intriguing you know how do you know all this stuff like he said you know all the stuff we knew but you actually have more authority and you use stuff more powerfully than we do this is like really cool and this guy taught me quite a bit and i've had this happen a few times and it was good for me because i one of my weaknesses is i doubt myself a lot i really do um and those of you who know me know i regularly self-doubt to the point when I need a big spanking, you know, I get so that's why I need more signs and confirmation just for anyone I know because I overthink and doubt myself. But I remember once years ago preaching on all of this and teaching the message, and I had people looking at me like I was a bit of a dumbass, and I kind of was feeling a bit silly. And then afterwards, a guy came up to me and spoke to me privately who had been staring intently. And he goes, You know, I used to be a Satanist and we used to do stuff in our coven where we would take authority. And we would shut down churches and attack people and everything and do it all the time. You know, we'd attack churches and attack businesses. And I know about all that sort of stuff. And he said, it's really good you know this stuff because I try and tell people this. And then no, one's, no one listens to me in the church. They all think I'm just being a paranoid guy. But he said, I know what I'm talking about. He said, this stuff you're saying is really good because we'd never dare mess with churches that knew their authority. And he said, then we would never mess with them. So it's good to know that, guys. And it's good to know that we have authority. It's good to know that we can go out. And I love one of my favorite scriptures. And I know William. It's why I love William. I think he's really cool. Because William William just goes out and hunts. His name was after William the Conqueror. God told him, your job is to hunt, is, is to burn cities, you know, drive out demons, hunt down kingdoms. And I've even told him lately, William, even get more authority, push harder. You, you can do more. You can move in even bigger authority than you're doing right now. And he does. He's stepping into it more, you know, the conqueror. And I love it where it says about the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Um, it's a really great scripture. It's one of my absolute favorite, you know, um, because in other words, Jesus is saying he came to disrupt Satan's kingdom. He didn't come here to kind of pussyfoot around about it. He said, until in the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violent and the violent take it by force. In other words, we disrupt. Martin Luther King did not turn up with love and light saying to people, oh, far, far out, guys. It's probably not all that nice that you people don't sit with black people in cafes. You know, I know, I know it's hard and it's a little bit rough, but yeah, I know. Well, look, just kind of do what you can. And yeah, I know you've got to just hang back a little bit, but just every now and again, just secretly meet up with him and have a coffee and don't don't rock the boat. Imagine if Martin Luther King had done that. No, the civil rights campaigners actually got there and deliberately walked in, sat on the bus with some colored people, knowing they'd be arrested. Martin Luther King would go and yell from the rooftops, telling everyone they were absolute retards, or excuse that French, no, I'll cancel that word, that was uh, out of order. But they would say things like, you guys are absolute fools, you know, you're like, this is like ridiculous. Like, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? And he would yell at people until someone shot him. But his legacy was left behind. Now, I don't really want to be shot, but I certainly don't want to be silent and certainly don't want to not do something about it. And in COVID, we saw this, you know, not disrupting. And one of the things I was so glad I did was I remember the day when the second lockdown happened and this wildness with rage and tears poured out of my eyes. I said, fuck this. We're going to get up there and teach people their legal rights. And I did that. I look back and think I'm glad I did that, you know, paid a bit of a price for it, which I won't go into now, but I did it, you know, and I was glad I did something that helped people and at least gave people some support and helped through it. 
So especially what's coming now as we're entering difficult times economically for many. You know, for those in the kingdom of God and those who know their spiritual authority, these times you'll prosper more than ever. Your, your finances will increase. Your wealth will grow. Because at no, if, you're, if you're following God's order, if you're speaking prosperity, if you're honoring the system that you're in, if you're tithing and giving and working within the structure of the church, knowing that you're in the right place, you'll prosper. You have nothing to worry about. But many in society will, will suffer. Many are going through mental health right now. Many are broken. Many are literally booking in for mental health, thinking they're going to commit suicide. People are broken. Our youth were given a poor example in COVID. They were forced into a vaccine. They didn't want to have many of them. Many of them are suffering for that now. Many of them came from broken homes. They came from damaged lives. William sees this especially. You know, James and Edward are now starting to really see that. But many of them, they have not been given a good example by us. And many of our society right now are broken. They don't know where to turn. They don't have the churches that we had growing up. So our light right now is the one thing that gives them hope uh, by us showing the way to people and setting up a way to heal the brokenhearted, as Jesus said, set the captives free. And I'm so passionate about it, you know, about doing this kind of stuff, you know, and knowing the authority that we've been given and knowing what Jesus has said here. I deliberately put the one on the right because notice what he also says, submit to the governing authorities, because even the governing authorities we've seen today God has allowed them to be there. Now, I'm not saying you sit there and let the governments go. And during COVID, I mean, all of you knew I was perfectly happy to speak out and say that the actions of the politicians was way out of order. What they were doing were trying to coerce people's body. But you notice I was very careful what I say about them as well, because I knew they had authority. I mean, Daniel Andrews was legitimately voted into government. He was voted in. Mark McGowan was voted in on a landslide. They had authority to be there. And whether we like it or not, and they reflected the consciousness and will of the people. But our job is to be the light in the midst of that, in the same way the early church was the, was the light in the midst of the Roman Empire and things like that. If we get that, we can literally shake kingdoms, change society. And not just that, I've been telling people, I, I, my newest affirmation is I am at peace with the ruler. In other words, not only am I at peace with them, but I said, we, they'll give us land. We're going to work with our ruler to help clean up our city. Because no doubt, there are many people in government who see this. Because I know, I know that. I've had a lot of connections with governments over the years. There are many people. I've got inside information. There's a lot of politicians who are very concerned what's going on. They don't like what's going on, and they want to bring change. They just don't know how to do it. So how are they going to get help? By us, the church. This is how it worked. This is how the Dark Ages came about, because the Catholic Church had authority, and the leaders of the earth listened to them. Why can't we be the same? You know, because our politicians need us. Our governments need us. They need our help. They don't need us bagging them and carrying on like children. You know, we can be the light to sort things out in our society and take action and say, yeah, come on, guys, this is like way out of order what you're doing. But in saying that, we understand what you're trying to do. Let's get this cleaned up. And remembering when we're doing this, who our real enemy is. It's the spirits and the entities controlling the minds of these people who've been implemented by carefully organized, disciplined militants satanic rituals and things in the background who know how to control the energy to manipulate the mind. So, okay, we're, we're against that. So that's what we've got to counteract. And we've got authority over that. One of my final things I'll share before I end today's message is one of my favorite scriptures on the Roman centurion. And I'm going to actually read this one here. It's so important. And if you understand this script today, you can go out there, shake kingdoms, and realize the authority you've been given. So when we come up here from verse 5, we've received it. A Roman centurion, who keep in mind, was like a government official, part of the enemy who's enslaving the Jews. He says, Lord, my servant lies at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. In other words, my servant is sick. And Jesus said, I will come to your house and heal him. Now, let's look at what he says. He says, Lord, I'm not worthy, but you should come under my roof. Now, was he having a bad feeling and kind of beating himself up? I highly doubt that a Roman centurion with high authority had a self-worth issue. But he's like, I know authority. And this, you are like way beyond me. You are like a spiritual master. You are a teacher. You are way over me. I am under you. Like I felt when I was in the, in the, in the bushes with John Thompson, like, 
in this realm, I am under him. There's no way I'm going to the same rock next to him without his permission. I'm going under the rock. So he's saying, Lord, I'm not worthy but to come under your roof. No, like, no way. I'm not going to embarrass myself by walking in there and pretending you're coming in and pretending we're equals. So just do this to me, Lord. Speak the word and my servant shall be healed. That's all you got to do. Lord, I know, I know how authority works. So you are the spiritual authority. You're in charge of the spirit realms. And how do we know that that's what he meant? Because this is what he says. I'm a man under authority. I've got a boss as a Roman centurion. But also I have soldiers under me. And I say to this man, you go. And he goes and does what I tell him. And to another come and he comes and go, my servant, do this. And that's why I told people, that's why people follow Daniel Andrews. Because the one thing he did right was he had authority. Do this now. Do this now. Do this. He spoke of authority. Meanwhile, most of us were running around doing all kinds of nonsense. So I said, that's why he got authority, because he actually walks around. I don't think anyone doubts for a minute Daniel Andrews has a self-worth issue around his authority. Or Mark McGowan. He had authority. He knew it. So we can learn from these people. That they can be our teacher. And all that all that Victoria would need is, is a man or woman with great authority with Daniel Andrews. He speaks of more spiritual authority. Daniel Andrews would quickly do what he's told. I'm going to tell you that now. And the centurion knew this. He said, for I'm a man under authority. I tell so, uh, under Caesar, but equally, I tell all these people what to do, and they do what I tell them. In other words, I, I know who I am because I have huge authority because I'm under authority. And I know that you're my authority when it comes to spiritual realm, Lord. So all you got to do is to speak the word and he's healed. Now, notice what Jesus said. He said he marveled. In other words, he goes, wow. Wow, 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 wow. He says, wow. He's like, and for Jesus to say, wow, pretty big. He very rarely see that. He goes, holy mother of God. He says, I have not found so great faith, not even in Israel, not even among the church, not even among the indigos, not even among the love and light, not even among the church, not even among the great yogis. I have found such great faith. This guy, a Roman soldier, absolutely, literally is way, way above any of you. And I say to you, and many gives a statement that many shall come and sit with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the children of the kingdom should be cast into outer darkness. In other words, many of the supposed indigos and spiritual churchgoers are going to miss out because you guys in your egotistical arrogance will walk around thinking you can do whatever you want, while these people in the world who are broken, and you see the system's broken down, as soon as they see a master and a, a god, I can, I can assure you, many of these politicians that you see, and even pharmaceutical leaders, will end up, and you'll see them, in the kingdom of heaven or wherever we see it, and you'll go, wow, because these people, it will actually, once they see the kingdom of heaven come of a greater order, they'll quickly submit to it. I had a friend who actually was sitting with a Supreme Court um, Freemasonry judge years ago, and the judge openly said to him, he said, we know the authority that you guys have. He said, but none of you are exercising it. He said, the day we see it, I know we'll have to submit in our courts, but none of you are doing it. So until then, we rule the show. But he said, we knew if you guys really knew your authority, we'd have to obey. And I was like, wow. And I've actually had friends who've gone into courts knowing their authority and judges have done what they're told. I've had it happen to me once, 2012, I walked into court in Queensland. I had authority. And I started to speak on an argument that was so insane that the, the cops were giggling. The magistrate listened to me. He smiled, nodded his head. And the whole thing got me fame on the internet. Literally did, because people were like, because I, I, I won a case based on a crazy argument, knowing who I was. I remember going into the town of Williams, that some of you know in WA, and I had this authority. And I walked into the court, took authority over the courtroom. And as I walked in there um, on a speeding fine, I had no idea what I was doing. I actually didn't. I was helping a client out, and I botched my argument. It's quite a funny story. And the magistrate was smiling. And she said, Mr. Black, I think what you mean to say, and she told me what to say. Is that what you're saying? And she kind of winked at me or kind of looked at me. And the, and the prosecutor is looking in absolute horror. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I think that's what I meant. Yes, yeah, what I meant. She goes, okay, good. Well, that's what you meant. I'm going to hold in your favor. 
And it was just, it was absurd. Like I should not have won that case. I absolutely botched my argument completely. And the magistrate goes, okay, no, this is what I think you meant to say. I think you just misworded it. So she actually told me, could I take an authority over that court? And the client was kind of grinning afterwards, goes to me, how did you do that? And I'm like, I don't know. I said, I think God was on our side. He goes, yeah, I think so too. And then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way. And as you believed, it will be done. And the heal and it was served. And the, and the servant was healed in the same hour. And then it says, when Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw his wife, mother lay sick of a fever, touched her hand and the fever left her. That was the authority Jesus had, which by the way, he says exactly, we have that same authority. And we can see that in scripture. He said, all power is given to me, and authority is given to me in heaven and earth. He says also in Mark 16, something very similar. He says, go into the world and preach the gospel, the good news, whatever that, the good news, the message that you have authority, the message that the kingdom of God is higher than what you're seeing here. He says, he that believes and baptized will be saved. In other words, salvation, by the way, when you read the original meaning, is just basically prospered will be delivered from the matrix, will be out of the matrix, prospered, healthy, well. But even beneath not, you'll be damned. In other words, basically, you'll be on the outer, outer and you'll be struggling and having a, a fucked up life with your health and finance and everything else, how it basically looks. And when he said the signs shall follow me as we believe, in other words, there'll be physical evidence in the physical realm, not just a spiritual kind of love and light feeling. In my name, they cast out devil, speak with new tongues, Take up servants, and if they drink deadly poisons, it won't hurt them. That's how Raymond Grace does it. He neutralizes frequencies. I do that now. I neutralize frequencies. When I, when I do take pharmaceuticals now, I just neutralize the frequencies. Like occasionally I have to, like when I go to the dentist, to get anesthetic, and I'm fine. It doesn't do anything to me. Because I neutralize the frequency. It's telling the Apostle John that he was, boil, he was boiled in oil by Emperor Nero and got up with no, not a single hurt on his body because he knew this. He knew his authority. He knew none of this could touch him. So there's signs that will follow us when we believe. So my final message really today is to go out into the world and spread this message. Start to do it in your society. If you're wanting to act, do activism with the farming thing, go out there and bring this mindset and this authority and taking authority over the spiritual forces and everything that's behind all that. And then go in there and bring the change and transformation that's necessary because it's going to be you who does it. It's going to be you. And that's in all areas. If, you, if you're with youth like William, go in there, help the broken youth, create something that's going to change their life. Go out there and take authority. When they come into your house, for example, I told William, just say today, anyone who comes into my house is blessed from this day forward. If any of you are in my house, their lives are blessed. While they're my friends and with me, they're blessed. I say that over my clients, anyone who's part of my business are blessed. They're protected. Their finances are protected. Anyone who's in Global Wealth Club and Wealth Safe, their, their finances are protected. Anyone who's in City Awakening, I'm saying you're protected spiritually. You're looked after. You are protected. As far as I'm concerned, it's protected. And we see that all through scripture. And I could be here all day teaching this. But this was how... We, we were part of the church growing up, everyone. We were, we were a church that spoke. We had warriors and, and evangelists and people who spoke, who burned cities, preached kingdoms, who brought in messages of faith. And that's what I see who I am, for example. But then the church grows long-term by the pastors, the teachers, the healers. And that's why I said this to James and Ed, like Grace, you know. Many of you love Grace because Grace just loves everyone in the church. She serves all of you over and over and over again. I know James, he says to me, yeah, he just wants to see healing for people in trauma. He wants to see stability for people. He wants to see people in the church and in our lives have stability. A physical presence, so youth who come will have stability. People who come will have stability. Any one of you who here will have stability. You'll be healing. You'll be getting through what's going on in the world. Your trauma will be healed. You'll have an environment to be safe. And that's how churches grow great, by, do, by having everyone in the work stepping up and doing their part. And without you, this church is nothing, you know? I'm a great, I may be a great speaker in this area, 
but in all that other stuff, it, it would burn out. And we've seen that. We've seen City Awakening go up and go down at times because in the, the day, my messages can wake people up, inspire people. And no doubt today, some of you are going like, wow. But from here now, it's up to you and the people who are here who are more kind of healers, pastoral and that to help implement this into the practical so we can start to transform lives and get people busy and praying for the energy of our cities and praying for the work and working together to build local healing groups and action groups and starting to get people together and teaching them the stuff you learn in this group and letting it have a life of its own. And William, to get among the youth and keep making a difference and taking authority over the things in their life and starting to bring change in their life and seeing transformation and with every client. So thank you everyone for listening to me today and just for your trust and letting me speak and rant at times because I know all of you, you know, you're giving your time every week to come here and I value you for doing that. I really do. And it humbles me and I'm aware of my responsibility and I just praying every day I can do better and improve what I'm doing and get better at what I'm doing and be a better example for people and let go more and let others step up and do more and submit better within the authority that I'm in, you know? And even this week, you know, it's been wonderful for all of us to see the changes. And I think um, you'll you'll hear it in Grace. She's just operating in much deeper authority now because she actually understands her authority now. Like even in the business, being a director, she has a great authority and she has authority over everyone. And she's a good director because she exercises authority with love and by trusting her team. And that's why I love working for Grace and being under her in that company, for example. And then City Awake. And so... All of us here have a great chance to be a light to the world and make a difference by learning and starting to practice spiritual authority. So just practice it. Command blessing over your home. Command protection. Command anyone who comes into your house is going to get healed. Just start doing it every day, giving thanks for it, just giving thanks for it and seeing what happens. Okay, so thank you for that. So now I'm not very good at kind of facilitating discussion, as those of you know. I'm pretty shit at it, actually. So it'd be really helpful if someone, whether it's Grace or Steve or anyone, just steps up and helps me to take it from here as to what's next. Well, Warren, maybe it is just sharing um, takeaways from today, be it the um, discussion at the start or or your presentation. Maybe that's just it to give people time to reflect and integrate it. Maybe come on camera, Steve, or something, or just whatever, or chat, or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm happy to go first. Um, I actually really like that, um, what you said towards the end there about, that, that really resonated for me about, um, you know, protection. Anyone who comes into your house is protection. Anyone who's in City Awakening is protected like that. Claiming that spiritual authority, um, you know, and that's one thing I've heard Derek talk about as well. Um, is that that claiming of authority so um, that was probably the thing that stood out most for me and I think to loop back around to where we started that's really important in the times that we're in um, to, to be I guess strong enough and sure enough about ourselves to claim that authority yeah that was that was what it was for me anyway I like that Steve thank you yeah, and, and I just want to say to add to that, um, you know, thanks for your comment here, Suzanne. It's, it's wonderful you say you keep believing in strength within yourself and the support that you have from others. There's a, there's a wonderful art, isn't it, in that you work within yourself, you do it yourself, and you have a wonderful team around you, and yet the double layer of that I, I love for me because I naturally don't like, um, I, I'm naturally very independent myself and um, I listen to my voice within the deep, the, the beat of my drum. But as, I, as I'm maturing, I'm noticing that if I can submit or work interrelatedly with others, there's a huge leverage in that. Uh, and that's my findings anyway, in that if I, yes, I do work in myself, but also having belonging to a community, belonging to a group, and that I can just come in and kind of lay down 
or sit down with others and be <clears throat> interdependent, you know, to see what others are. And yet I come in humbling myself and see what others come out with, with whatever we're going through. So having the support as a team is wonderful. But also there's something about, for me, there's something about humbling myself amongst the group that I can really fully trust and having that I know that the team, like for example, I know Warren and Steve has got my back and Christine and those who I've worked with very closely. I know they've got my, you know, I can trust them no matter what I'm going through that they, you know, that they've got my back. And they can support me in that sense. So it's a it's a wonderful kind of uh, inner depth and different levels of support, and also um, working in yourself, and um, and also knowing that you're not you know on your own. That you can you can really just let go and allow others to to really support you. So I hope that makes sense. So the interconnectedness of being one, there's one, the laws of one and the laws of many. So the art of shifting from one to the other, transforming from one to the other is, um, it's wonderful. So for those of you who joined us in the beginning, and also I'm sure that um, the message was interrelating with um, with what Warren shared, how was it? How was it for you? Was there any aha moments, or is there a connection between the two? Yeah, Grace, I would say there's um, definitely a connection between the two because I think understanding the history of it all it sort of gives more clarity about why we're here, I guess. In a way and then understanding um the power that you've got the authority and how to work it all of those things it it, it sort of for me it gives more clarity really mm. definitely a connection between the two it's sort of the history why it's there and all that stuff and how it came about i haven't read the whole thing yet but i'm looking forward to reading it um but yes you didn't you do need to know how you've got the authority, why you've got to the authority and how to use it, really, all of those things. Yeah, like, you know, we went through the tree of life yesterday, hey, Christine, and how yeah. magical it was if you look at the tree of life because you can you can add layers to it, the numerology, the Kabbalah, the, um, the tarot, the all of these things, the astrology or all that stuff, you can layer upon layer with the, the tree of life, moving from Malkut to um, Kitha, so as above, so as below. And going to those places takes a lot of stages and a lot of, um, and there's, there's work to be done. Uh, we cannot ignore the work, but in working, you know, we do it energetically and there's a path for us to go. And if we look at that <clears throat> from, you know, if you if you imagine the, the tree of life, there's two pillars, one's, one on the other. And so um, you can swing from one side to that another. And there's always, always, always the balancing and the harmony and alignment. Isn't it? So if you go from one stage to the next, you always bring to the core center so that you can come into the balance. So having the knowledge of what we shared earlier, because um, I certainly have got a lot to learn with Anna, and the Ananekins and Draconians and all that, and um, having that knowledge and tuning and receiving transmission and applying it to our everyday life, there's a really good balancing effect. And, you know, with the tree of life that we went through yesterday, it was it was excellent so that we've got a plan we've got a roadmap to you know to do something to tap into it and that requires a lot of that re to me that requires it's a lot easier if you have a group of people that thinks the same and we can do it together 
Uh, yes, I definitely agree. There's no way that I feel that I could have done it. Even though you've got to do the work yourself, on yourself, but having others around, um, bringing other aspects of the whole thing in, it's been really good. And as you, I heard you say before, having each other's back, that's really, really important as well. Very grateful for that, I must admit. Particularly, um, particularly deception, you know, we, we're trying to uncover all the deception that we've been under and all the things that we've been conditioned and controlled and unraveling it, unfold it. Oh, gosh, no wonder we go crazy sometimes and, you know, we go crazy, no one understands us when you're on your own. So it's good. So I really, really appreciate everyone here. And um, for those who are working with me, thank you so much for having that trust and that we can work together and keep going. So <clears throat> anyway, any last words? Anyone, anyone wants to share? Yeah, there is a lot to digest, isn't it, Mika? Uh, yeah, I was just thinking if we had no knowledge of a higher power, the creative force source within us, if we had no body else to assist us and showing us the way, no wonder so many people are terrified because they don't know what to do. Mm. And I'm just so grateful that I have the support of all you people, but it goes greater than that. It's the support of Yeshua, the support of the creative source mm. that every day bolsters my confidence in knowing that where we are going, wherever it is, we are the foundation of a beautiful new way of living that the earth hasn't experienced for millennia and i'm just so grateful for all of you for sharing in where we're at because we will get there we will all hold hands and we will all step over that line together and be able to help so many more who are terrified of what is happening around them so thank you everybody for being who you are and that's lovely, Suzanne. Thank you very much for that powerful words. Any last words? Any last thoughts, anyone? Yeah, I can say the same thing. I, when I joined uh, the group, I, I never heard about many of the things that we're talking about today, and I, I. I know I grew a lot throughout the sessions and uh, throughout the, the months or, or years since I've been um, with all of you. And, um, and, I, and it just blows me away how much more there is to learn. But without learning, we, we don't have authority over our lives or over anything. If you don't know what's going on or you don't know about something how do you have authority you can't because you don't know what's what, what's happening so uh, um definitely the being in a group helps a lot because it's very easy to get um sort of stray away um without a group support and and it's it's especially someone like me who haven't really had much experience in this. It's just amazing how much I've learned uh, just by attending groups and, and listening to webinars. And, and now I really want to clean up everything in my life um, and have that authority over my life and my family's life. And I mean, everybody has their own authority in my family, but I, I want to have mine for sure, because I think it does rub off on other people, whether it's your friends or family or, or who you have, whoever you meet. And um, yeah, it's just definitely 
lessen the fear of what's coming when you have that trust and that knowledge definitely lessens the, the, the sense of fear and uncertainty and and all that which is really important these days thank you very much Judith that's coming straight from your heart I like mm -hmm. that yeah and I just want to lastly share with everyone here too that um you know thank you so much for not elevating Warren um because Warren is just human and you know you guys have seen his ups and downs and all that and whoever speaks um, on stage here, whether it's Steve Plummer, whether it's William and all that, it's really, it's wonderful to be in this group that you guys don't elevate any of the speakers, even Raymond Grace, what they have, the genius that they are, it's in you, you recognise that. Um, the only difference really between us is um, <clears throat> our responsibilities. Uh, we're crazy enough to be at the forefront and we get um, the hits. And we don't mind that we're thick skinned, but um, you know it's important that you know we don't elevate one another because if you're elevating it, you're putting yourself in the pit, and we certainly don't want to do that. We don't want to put anyone in the pit, and certainly not myself. And so you know, I really appreciate and total gratitude that whoever speaks on stage here or the webinars that you guys listen. I just want to encourage you. You might be listening and being passive. But part of that, we need a we need audience. So we're all one and the same, whether you're a speaker, whether you're a participant, whether you're a listener, we're all one and the same. My encouragement to each one of you here is to find your voice and really speak out. Because the only way we can really do this is if you find your voice, find who you are. Now, Steve, now I'm going to pitch for you, Steve. There's a wonderful book that Steve Plummer has um, written, Finding You. Really encourage you to buy that book and go through it, go through the introspection and reflection, finding you. And so because it requires to do what we're doing, it really requires each and every one of us here to find our voice, to find our place and position. So whether at the forefront or the back, when you look at the chess game, there's pawns, there's different players on the chess. And so whatever place you find yourself to do, um, do 100% because it's all required. Each position is required to fulfill it because if we don't fill it, some, someone else or something, another entity will fill out. So, yeah, so, yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for, you know, really aiding and being here and it does, it does matter. Whether we had two people, three people, or right now 12, um, we know that this is going out. And yeah, so I just want to say thank you. Well, thanks for that plug, Grace. So it's findingyoubook.com.au. If you want to order a copy, findingyoubooks.com.au. Yeah, that's it. Warren's got the tithing on there. Yeah. Every now and then, Steve, I, I picked that up. And it's the questions, you know, it really helps you to reflect. and and question yourself and look really look in the mirror and wipe the mm. mirror it's now missed on the mirror mm. it doesn't like your doesn't like your page steve <laughs> uh, finding your book.com dot au yeah hang on finding your book dot com did you say yeah dot com dot au oh book okay finding yeah. yeah there you go You even look, the picture's not even bad, Steve. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> not too bad. Uh, and there's no Photoshop. Steve actually looks like that in real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no filters, as they say these days. <laughs> so it's strange. And the last thing is, yes, so for those of you who, I mean, a lot of you tithe, and I'm very grateful for all your support. And then for those who don't, then, yep. Um, we've also have our daily energy group link, which you can email us if you want to get access. It's a forty-nine dollar a month group. So for those of you who are not typing or in it, and be part of William's group and the church's group there to help people activate and keep your energy clean. There's actually some people that tie to the work that they don't attend in our webinars, but they the videos. It's just it's wonderful. See, even them watching the videos, they they actually tie. 
and they, they don't attend yeah. the Sunday sessions. <laughs> I know. Well, it's interesting because my mum has always typed and she always taught me that. And she's, yeah, she's been looked after, you know, and it's something that I remember. That's why I was really told this week to really make sure I start teaching and have no problem sharing this because it's very important, especially in these days to come, that tithing, it says in the Bible and in every book, it's not just the Bible, by the way, almost every spiritual teaching book. I remember being in Thailand with a shaman who was a pure new age kind of love and light shaman. He opened, he said to me, he goes, oh, he goes, people do not realize how powerful the tithe is. In fact, to the point, he said that once you really tithe, you start to get open doors for exemption from taxes where you won't have issues. He said, whereas when you are not tithing and you're also trying to avoid taxes, you're going to attract all kinds of challenges. And John D. Marchini said the same thing to me. He said, taxes exist to get people tithing, basically to the government. So once people move into a spiritual higher tithe, that's why Australian laws, for example, will give you foundations. We have the best laws in the world in Australia and US just about on foundations and charities that, that actually recognise that. And that comes back to the common law, the law of King Arthur, that the sons of God are exempt. So as soon as you're tithing and you're serving a higher purpose and doing philanthropy, you move to a whole different realm. So taxes exist. The shamans teach in the mystery schools to keep people tithing and make sure people do tithe. So even if they're not giving to church, but at least tithing to the government to recognise the fact that there is a, an infrastructure or order or ecosystem outside of them that provides for them, like whether it's government roads, whether it's government buildings, whether it's this council picking up rubbish. So once you start moving beyond that and start tithing in other ways, like I didn't dare set up my church and legally minimise my taxes and that until I knew I was running it. And even when I was running it, not doing much, I hardly, I was staying away from it until I knew that I was doing the work because it's very important with spiritual law and order. So yeah, but this, this, will, this will preserve your finances from the devourer, everyone, in these times to come, understanding this principle and either paying your taxes joyfully or tithing joyfully or both and watch how the doors start to open. And some of you know what I mean, who've been blessed with setting up foundations and philanthropy and you've noticed your taxes legally reduced. That's because you are actually tithing and actually giving. It all interrelates. So thank you, everyone. Thank you from the heart for all you've um, done and all your support. And yeah, make no apologies for sharing and teaching the message of authority today. And I look forward to seeing all of you next week and some of you throughout the week and spread the word. All right. See everyone. Have a good week. Thank you. Bye. Bye.